Let's make believe this is a flying wing model and you know this is the nose, this is the wing tips and the air is coming coming down this way. Well if you can imagine the air hitting the, the leading edge of the flying wing, it's going to have a tendency to get pushed to the side. Okay? And and the further along you go, this this tendency, this push to the side gets stronger and stronger. Okay? So so there's a couple of side effects from that. One is that if the air is getting pushed to the side here, that means that the airspeed here in the center of the wing is, is less than than you would expect. So if the airspeed is less, that means you're going to have less lift. Okay? And at the same time, if the air is going pretty much right along the wingspan here on the tip, you're going to have an effectively higher Reynolds number than you would otherwise. And, and one of the side effects of all of this is that you're actually going to have more lift generated at the wingtips than you would otherwise. Again, you know, this is in comparison to a wing that's not swept. Well, bottom line from, from both of these two effects is that the center of lift is, is actually further back than you would expect. So if you do the capitation, uh, you know, trying to figure out where the center of gravity needs to be and you use the mean aerodynamic chord, you know, MAC, and, and you figure that out and then you do a 10% stability margin and you put the CG based on that. So if you do all of those computations, which normally work fine, uh, the center of gravity is going to be too far forward because the center of lift is actually further back than what that formula says it is. Okay? So, so that's the reason why if you, if you just do the simple capitation on a flying wing, it's going to come out nose heavy. Okay? And, you know, it's, it's something that actually took airplane designers many years to figure out what was going on. And the, the bad news is, there is no easy way to compute just how far back the center of lift has been shifted. Now, of course, if you have a computer and you have a fancy program, it's easy to do. But if you're just doing a simple formula, it, it's, you, can, you can do estimates and you can get close. But it is, it's actually surprisingly hard to know exactly how much it got shifted back. I mean, you can get close. So, so my advice to you is, I would actually be conservative. I would actually use the standard formula, put the CG there, and, and fly the model on the maiden flight, knowing that it's going to be nose heavy. But you, you're being conservative. You're being you know, safe. So you fly, you figure out what else is wrong with the model, you know, as far as the trim changes that you need to make. So once, once you have it flying, I will actually start shifting the CG back and do the pitch stability test, you know, do, uh, you know, fly level and increase the speed to see if the pitch, if, if it pitches up, that means it's nose heavy. Uh, do a dive test, see if it goes straight down or if it, pulls out right away or, or whatever, you know, try flying inverted. So, you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of tests you can do. And if, if you think it's still no savvy, just shift the CG back and back and back until, until you're happy with it. And that's really the safest and I think the smartest way to do it rather than try and take a guess as to how far back the CG really needs to be. So, till next time.